Professor Pallas here with the wrap up for the popular diets assignment for spring 2020 for NTD 420. Before we get started, let's remember what the spirit of the assignment was. For this assignment, we were asking you to dismantle a diet. You needed to locate, first of all, an article, an ad, or a promotion that was promoting a popular diet. And then you needed to answer some specific questions regarding that diet and do some calculations. Then we asked you to find a second article that either supported or refuted that diet. We're asking you to then explain why this article does or does not support the first article that promoted the diet. Some of the things that's important to look at when you're questioning a diet or dismantling a diet is who wrote the article or who published the article. Does that person stand to benefit financially from people subscribing to this diet? Does the author or the publisher have an agenda? Typically when someone has an agenda, it's a financial agenda. It's also important whenever you're going to dismantle a diet to think about the basics that you know about nutrition and what you now know so far from taking this class about obesity. Some of the things that you wanna keep in mind when you're thinking about dismantling a diet is remembering that normal eating patterns can possibly evolve to disorder eating patterns that can possibly evolve to eating disorders. So look at the diet through that lens and question, is this diet setting someone up for disordered eating that could eventually lead potentially to an eating disorder? You also want to remember the guidelines for healthy eating. Limit added sugar, limit saturated fats, and limit sodium. Focus on variety, focus on nutrient density, and focus on proper and appropriate portion sizes. You want to remember the role of neurotransmitters and hormones because they do play a role in appetite and satiety. So if somebody's telling you that a diet is going to manage those things for you, you might want to question that. You also want to remember how nutrients are oxidized and metabolized. The, the key thing to remember is that fats burn in a fire fueled by carbohydrates. So if a diet is recommending very low carb carbohydrates and very high fats, you want to take a closer look at that diet. Remember the role of physical activity in managing weight. Does the diet recommend physical activity? If so, what types, how much is this appropriate for the person that you're considering the diet for? And also remember the plasticity of the BMR. That means it can change. It can be increased or it can be decreased. And you wanna remember what decreases the BMR, primarily too low of an intake of calories over time. So it's important to remember those general general terms when you're starting to dismantle a diet so that you can look at the diet through the lens of health, not weight loss, and then make sure it's appropriate for the person who's asking you about the diet. In this class for spring 2020, these are the diets that your peers in class reviewed. So we had five people who reviewed the Atkins diet. Two reviewed the plain Atkins diet, one the Atkins 20 diet, and one reviewed the Atkins diet with an overlay of intermittent fasting. Five people reviewed the keto diet. One person reviewed a variation of that, the keto pill diet. Other diets that I saw, the military diet, the Ducan diet, the slim fast keto diet, the oatmeal diet, intermittent fasting, the potato diet, the food combining diet, the Twinkie diet, the eight hour diet, the Whole30 diet, plant-based diet, the F factor diet, the Noom diet, the HCG diet, the Denny, Jenny Craig diet, the Sago diet, the vegan diet, the seven day juice cleanse diet, the one meal a day diet, and of course the baby food diet. If there are diets here that you've never heard of, you're not alone. There are diets here that were new to me. And what this shows you is that the dieting industry is tremendous. And 
the things that people will promote to promote weight loss could be beyond your wildest dreams. So it's always interesting to see what other people have uncovered for this project. For this project, 88% of the diets that this class reviewed were targeting overweight adults. 4% were targeting adults with type 2 diabetes. 4% were targeting adult females. And 4% were targeting adult males. Of the diets that this class reviewed, 34% of the diets were recommending less than 1,200 calories a day. That would be considered a very low calorie diet, and that would be putting a person at risk for decreasing their basal metabolic rate. 54% of the diets reviewed by this class were promoting a feasting state, and 46% of the diets reviewed by this class were promoting a fasting state. So this is actually not that bad of a statistic. When people are in a fasting state, that's when they're more likely to risk reducing their basal metabolic rate. So this actually wasn't that bad when I look at this in general terms. When we look at the macronutrient ranges, and this is very important for you to calculate when you're dismantling a diet, you need to understand how much protein, carbohydrates, and fat are recommended for in the diet. You need to understand whether this is appropriate for the client based on their medical conditions, and you need to understand how this might affect nutrient oxidation. More than 60% of the diets reviewed by the class were recommending protein greater than the person's needs and carbohydrates equal to or less than their needs. More than 60% of the diets were recommending fat intakes that were greater than their recommended needs. It's important to remember that because they were recommending high fat and low carbohydrates. And we know that when we talk about nutrient oxidation, fats burn in a fire that's fueled by carbohydrates. So if you're setting someone up to eat a diet that's higher in fat and lower in carbohydrates, you're setting them up for possible proper incorrect oxidation of those fat nutrients. Physical activity. Physical activity was not included in 94% of the diets that this class reviewed. And physical activity is one of the elements when it comes to weight management that we have the most control over. So that's something to focus on and to think about. Were the diets credible? And this was based on your opinion. 80% of you said that the diets that you reviewed were not credible. So this was the student's opinion. Were the diets based on random controlled trials? 68% of the diets were not. That means that there's no science backing up these dietary recommendations. And were the diets promoting a purchase? Again, this goes back to does the author of the diet or does the publisher of the diet have an agenda? And many of the diets that you reviewed were promoting the purchase of products. So products we saw promoted were shakes, prepared meals, cookies, bars, juice, pills, the keto pills. The HCG diet was recommending HCG injections, Twinkies, um, they were recommending that you purchase a juicer or a smoothie machine. And something that's newer in the diet realm is that now we see diets that are promoting people to purchase a software application in addition to or in place of a book or maybe an ebook. We also see people starting to recommend that you purchase their coaching services to go with the diet. One of the new diets out there right now that's being heavily promoted that is selling coaching services coordinated with an app is the Noom diet. So remember the science. Whenever you're looking at a diet for yourself, for a friend, for a family member, for a client, you're going to need to dismantle that diet. And the way to do that is with the science. If you dismantle a diet, not only will you understand the diet better, but you can help your clients better understand what a healthy eating pattern looks like and why a healthy eating pattern is going to contribute to weight stability and weight loss for them if that's what they desire. Also, keep in mind, you want to calculate the math for the macronutrients as well as for the total calorie intake. 
And you want to remember that fats burn in a fire that's fueled by carbohydrates. So if you see that incorrect combination of high fat, low carbohydrates, you want to consider carefully the person who this diet might be recommended for. It was a pleasure reading your papers. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it.